You humans live on a dirt ball, Ambassador Yaxa sneered, his mocking laughter echoing through the summit hall. Earth's delegation sat in stunned silence, the pride of an entire species crushed under the Voxari's scornful barbs. Mark Morales, Earth's veteran diplomat, clenched his fists under the table, his knuckles white with barely restrained fury. For too long, the Voxari had belittled humanity, dismissing their accomplishments and treating them as inferiors. But as Yaxa's insults grew more vicious, Morales realized that the time for diplomacy had passed. If humanity wanted respect, they would have to take it by force. Hours later, Morales gathered Earth's brightest minds in a dimly lit conference room. Dr. Reina Ishikawa, a brilliant terraforming expert, listened intently as Morales laid out his audacious plan. To transform the Empire's most prized planets into barren wastelands, mirroring the dirt ball they so despised. General Soren Voss, Earth's cunning spymaster, leaned forward, his eyes glinting with cold determination. We'll need detailed intelligence on their ecosystems. My operatives can infiltrate deep into Imperial space. Gather the necessary data. Admiral Alexei Petrov, a hot-headed fleet commander, slammed his fist on the table. And once we have that intel, my ships will be ready. We'll strike fast and hard, leaving nothing but dust in our wake. Morales nodded grimly, his resolve hardening with each passing moment. The road ahead would be perilous, fraught with danger at every turn. But as he looked around the room at the determined faces of Earth's best and brightest, he knew that they would stop at nothing to restore humanity's pride. The Galactic Empire had sown the seeds of humiliation for too long. Now it was time for humanity to reap the vengeful harvest one world at a time. In the heart of Zarthak's prime, Agent Damien Sato moved through the glittering halls of the Voxari elite, his every step measured and calculated. The opulent surroundings were a far cry from the Spartan accommodations of Earth, but Sato had long ago learned to adapt to any environment. His disguise as a wealthy industrialist was flawless, from the shimmering neo-silk of his suit to the haughty arrogance of his demeanor. As he mingled with the cream of Voxari society, Sato's sharp eyes darted from one conversation to the next, his augmented earpiece translating the alien tongues with flawless precision. Snippets of gossip and idle chatter floated through the air, but Sato remained focused on his true objective, the vast network of environmental control systems that lay hidden beneath the planet's gleaming surface. Ah, Mogul Sato, a voice purred from behind him. I see you've found your way to our little soiree. Sato turned to face a statuesque Voxari female, her iridescent skin shimmering under the chandeliers. He recognized her instantly, Lady Xantha, one of the Empire's most influential power brokers. Lady Xantha, Sato inclined his head in a show of deference. Your hospitality is, as always, unparalleled. Xantha's laugh was like the tinkling of wind chimes. And your flattery is, as always, impeccable. Tell me, what brings a man of your stature to Zarthak's prime? Surely not the idle pleasures of the court. Sato smiled, his expression a perfect mask of easy charm. Alas, duty calls even in the midst of such beauty. I have a keen interest in the technological marvels that keep this planet so pristine. Xantha's eyes narrowed almost imperceptibly. A curious pursuit for a businessman. One might wonder if your interests lie beyond mere profit. Sato met her gaze unflinchingly, his voice smooth as honey. We all have our little eccentricities, my lady. Mine just happened to run towards the... environmental. The tension hung in the air for a heartbeat. Then Xantha's face split in a dazzling smile. Then you simply must let me give you a tour of our facilities. I'm sure a man of your discernment would appreciate the artistry of our terraforming systems. Sato bowed deeply, his triumph carefully hidden. It would be my greatest pleasure. As Xantha led him away from the glittering throng, Sato allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction, one step closer to the knowledge that would bring the Empire to its knees. On the frozen wastes of Nyx, Agent Axel Novak battled through the howling blizzard, his thermal suit straining against the planet's brutal cold. The research outpost loomed ahead, a stark silhouette against the endless white. Novak's intel had confirmed the presence of cutting-edge terraforming schematics within the outpost's secure databanks, 
schematics that could mean the difference between victory and defeat in the coming war. As he approached the outpost perimeter, Novak's suit scanners picked up the telltale signatures of Voxari security drones. He cursed under his breath, reaching for the pulse rifle slung across his back. The drones were fast and lethal, their AI programmed to kill on sight. But Novak had faced worse odds and lived to tell the tale. With a deep breath, he charged forward, his rifle spitting bolts of searing energy into the swirling snow. The drones responded instantly, their own weapons carving glowing paths through the blizzard. Novak jinked and weaved, his augmented reflexes guiding him through the deadly dance of close quarters combat. One by one, the drones fell, their metallic carapaces shattered by Novak's relentless onslaught. But even as the last machine collapsed into the snow, Novak knew his true test still lay ahead. The outpost's overseer, a sadistic Voxari scientist known only as the Vivisector, would not give up his secrets easily. Novak steeled himself for the confrontation to come, his grip tightening on his rifle. The fate of humanity rested on his shoulders, and he would not fail. Not now, not ever. Back on Earth, Dr. Reina Ishikawa stared at the glowing screens of her laboratory, her brow furrowed in concentration. The data streaming in from the operatives was staggering in its complexity, each bit of information a piece of the grand puzzle that was the Empire's terraforming secrets. But Ishikawa was no stranger to challenges. Her mind raced as she pored over the schematics and environmental readouts, her fingers flying across the console as she ran simulation after simulation. Slowly, painfully, the pieces began to fall into place. I think I have it, she breathed, her voice barely above a whisper. The key to unraveling their ecosystems. It's all here. Her team gathered around, their faces a mix of excitement and trepidation. They knew the road ahead would be long and painful, the challenges daunting, but with Ishikawa at the helm, they dared to hope. And in the shadows, Mark Morales watched and waited, his heart heavy with the weight of responsibility. The pieces were in motion, the game begun. All that remained was to see it through to the bitter end. For the pride of Earth, for the future of humanity, at any expense. Dr. Reina Ishikawa's fingers flew across the holographic interface, her eyes darting between streams of data. The lab hummed with tension as her team watched, breaths held. Initiating final integration sequence, she announced, her voice steady despite the gravity of the moment. A low whine filled the air as the nanobot swarm came to life. On the central display, a barren moon's surface transformed before their eyes. Craters smoothed into rolling hills, while sterile rock gave way to verdant forests and crystal-clear lakes. My God, whispered one of the junior researchers. It's working. Ishikawa allowed herself a small smile. Not just working, exceeding every projection. The door hissed open, and Mark Morales strode in, his face a mask of grim satisfaction. I take it we have good news? Ishikawa nodded. The swarms are ready. We can reshape worlds in days, not decades. Morales's eyes gleamed. Then it's time for the next phase. Hours later, in a secure communications room, Morales faced the flickering hologram of Zarthon Cole. The Voxari's features were alien, but his expression was unmistakably one of concern. You understand the risks I'm taking, Morales? Cole's voice crackled with static intention. We all have much to lose, Morales replied, but even more to gain. What can you tell me about the Empire's defenses? Call's image flickered as he transmitted a burst of encrypted data. This is everything. Patrol routes, sensor blind spots, command protocols. Use it wisely. As the transmission ended, Morales turned to General Soren Voss. Get this to our strike teams. It's time to put your people to the test. In a cavernous training facility, Sergeant Kai Tanaka ducked under a hail of simulated blaster fire. His team moved with practice precision, neutralizing holographic enemies with ruthless efficiency. Captain Lena Okafor watched from an observation deck, her keen eyes missing nothing. As the exercise concluded, she keyed her calm. Impressive work, Sergeant. Report to my office. Tanaka arrived, still flushed from exertion. Okafor didn't waste time with pleasantries. We're accelerating the timetable. Your team will be leading the assault on Nexus Prime. 
Tanaka's eyes widened. The Imperial Capital? Okafor nodded. The heart of the beast. You'll be inserting the nanoswarms directly into their central terraforming grid. It's suicide, Tanaka muttered. It's necessary, Okafor countered. Are you up for it? Tanaka's mind focused. We'll get it done. In a vast hangar, Dr. Vikram Patel made final adjustments to a sleek, dark vessel. Its hull seemed to drink in the light, promising invisibility even in the heart of enemy territory. She's beautiful, Admiral Alexei Petrov said, running a hand along the ship's flank. Patel nodded. And deadly, the Empire won't know what hit them. Petrov's expression darkened. And the civilian populations? Have we considered the collateral damage? We've all considered it, came Morales' voice from behind them. But we're out of options. The Empire made their choice when they labeled us dirt. As the strike teams made final preparations, tension crackled through Earth's command center. Morales stood at the heart of it all, surrounded by holographic displays of their targets. All teams report in, he ordered. One by one, confirmations came in from across the globe and beyond. Tanaka's voice was the last. Strike Team Alpha, ready to deploy. Morales took a deep breath. Then let's remind the galaxy why Earth should never be underestimated. Launch? Across the system, stealth ships slipped their moorings. As they accelerated towards their targets, the once-scorned dirt world prepared to unleash a fury that would reshape the very face of the galaxy. Galaxy. The stealth ships cut through the void, their hulls absorbing every stray photon. Inside the lead vessel, Captain Lena Okafor gripped the command chair, her eyes fixed on the looming silhouette of Zarthax Prime. Atmospheric entry in three minutes, the pilot announced. Beside her, Agent Damien Sato ran through last-minute intel on a holographic display. Security patterns unchanged. We should have a clear insertion point. Okafor nodded, then keyed the ship-wide comm. All personnel, prepare for deployment. Remember your training. We strike fast, we strike hard. As one, Alpha Team rose and checked their gear. The cargo hold hummed with the contained energy of Dr. Ishikawa's nanobots, primed and ready to reshape an entire world. Across the system, similar scenes played out. On the approach to Kessel 7, Sergeant Kai Tanaka's Bravo Team made final preparations. The lush green world filled their viewports, a verdant paradise soon to be transformed. Agent Reyes, Tanaka called. Any last-minute updates from the ground? Marcus Reyes shook his head. Nothing new, but once we're planetside, I've got contacts who can get us close to the terraforming grid. Meanwhile, Charlie Team's vessel skimmed the icy surface of Nix. Lieutenant Alexander Kozlov peered through swirling snow at the research outpost ahead. Novak, he growled. You're sure about those schematics? Agent Axel Novak's grim smile was barely visible beneath his thermal gear. Trust me, Lieutenant. I didn't go through hell to get faulty data. Back on Zarthax, Okafor's team hit the ground running. They moved like shadows through glittering streets, Sato's intimate knowledge of the city guiding them, past patrols and sensor grids. They reached the central terraforming complex, a towering spire of shimmering crystal. Sato's hands flew over the access panel, and the doors slid open with a soft hiss. We're in, Okafor whispered into her comm, deploying package. She nodded to the team's tech specialist, who carefully removed a sleek canister from his pack. With practice movements, he interfaced it with the facility's main console. For a moment, nothing happened. Then a wave of shimmering silver burst forth, flooding the room and spreading through every conduit and pipeline. Outside, the first signs of change rippled across the cityscape. The air grew thin, the ambient light shifting as the atmosphere began to dissolve. Crystalline structures wavered, their molecular bonds weakening under the nanobot assault. Similar scenes unfolded across the Empire's worlds. On Kessel 7, lush fields withered and cracked as moisture was leached from soil and air alike. Nix's icy surface buckled and heaved. Vast chasms opening as millennia of permafrost liquefied in minutes. In the Imperial Palace on Zarthax, alarms blared. The Emperor's advisors scrambled, their faces pale with shock and fear. Impossible, Fleet Lord Vraxen roared. How could those dirt dwellers... 
My lord, a trembling aide interrupted, we're receiving a transmission from Earth. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing Mark Morales's stern visage. His voice rang out, cold and unyielding. For too long, humanity has endured your mockery and disdain. No more. You see now the power we wield. Your worlds will be restored only when Earth is granted full sovereignty and equal status among galactic powers. Persist in your arrogance, and we will reduce your empire to ash and dust. The transmission cut off, leaving stunned silence in its wake. Senator Kalara was the first to speak. We must negotiate. The damage... Negotiate? Vraxen spat. With vermin? No, we crush them. Now! As the Imperial leadership descended into chaos, the human strike teams made their daring escape. Admiral Alexei Petrov's voice crackled over the comms. All units, fall back to extraction points. Move fast. They're scrambling fighters. Okafor's team sprinted through disintegrating streets, dodging panicked crowds and collapsing structures. They reached their ship just as the first Imperial vessels screamed overhead. Go, go, go! Okafor shouted as the last team member dove through the airlock. The stealth ships rocketed away from the stricken worlds, weaving through debris fields and weapons fire. Petrov's teeth were gritted as he barked orders, guiding the fleet through a gauntlet of Imperial defenses. When they finally broke free of enemy space, a ragged cheer went up from the crews. But as the adrenaline faded, the weight of what they'd done began to sink in. In the mess hall of Okafor's ship, she found Tanaka staring blankly at a wall. You okay, Sergeant? He looked up, his eyes haunted. Did you see it? The cities, just crumbling. All those people. Okafor sat beside him, her own voice tight. I know, but it was necessary. We had no choice. Across the room, Kozlov smacked his fist on a table. No choice? We should have done this years ago. Let them feel what it's like to have their world torn apart. The outburst sparked heated debate among the gathered soldiers and agents. Some nodded in fierce agreement, while others recoiled at the vehemence in Kozlov's voice. As Earth's defenders sped home, the future of the cosmos hung in the balance. Would the Empire yield to their demands, or would this be the opening salvo of an even greater conflict? In his quarters, Damien Sato stared at the stars streaking past. He murmured almost to himself, What have we started? What have we done? Sato whispered, his eyes fixed on the starfield beyond the viewport. The question hung in the air, unanswered, as Earth's defenders raced home. But any hope for respite was shattered mere days after their return. Alarms blared through Earth's orbital shipyards. Captain Okafor sprinted down a corridor, dodging panicked workers as explosions rocked the station. Status report, she barked into her comm. Imperial Strike Force came the terse reply. They came out of nowhere, multiple civilian casualties. Okafor's fist tight as she reached the command center. Holographic displays showed the carnage unfolding across Earth's orbital infrastructure. Research stations vaporized under plasma bombardment. Shipyards crumpled, spilling half-built vessels into the void. Admiral Petrov's face appeared on the main screen, his expression grim. It's not just us. They're hitting key targets planetside, New Delhi, Johannesburg, the Ishikawa Institute. Okafor's blood ran cold. How? Our stealth tech? Compromised, Petrov cut her off. We don't know how, but they knew exactly where to hit us. In the heart of the Imperial Palace, Fleet Lord Vraxen watched the attack unfold with savage satisfaction. Let the vermin burn, he snarled. But not all shared his bloodlust. Senator Kalara burst into the war room, her scales flushed with anger. This is madness. You've doomed us all. Vraxen rounded on her. I've saved us. The humans will never dare strike again after this. Kalara's eyes narrowed. You fool. You've given them every reason to finish what they started. Her words proved prophetic. Within hours, Earth's leadership convened an emergency session. The chamber bristled with fury as reports of the devastation poured in. Mark Morales stood at the center of the storm, his face a mask of cold rage. They've made their choice, he declared. Now they'll reap the consequences. 
He turned to Dr. Ishikawa, who had barely escaped the destruction of her lab. How quickly can we deploy another wave of terraforming strikes? Ishikawa's eyes gleamed with a mixture of grief and commitment. Give me 48 hours. As Earth prepared its retaliation, cracks formed within the Empire. Senator Kolara worked tirelessly, building a coalition of moderates who saw the folly of Raxon's warmongering. In a secure bunker deep beneath the Imperial capital, Kolara met with her most trusted allies. We must act now, she insisted, before there's nothing left to save. Among those gathered was Zarthon Cole, the Voxari defector. He pushed forward a data crystal. This contains the Empire's full military deployment plans. With this, Earth can cripple Vraxen's forces in one fell swoop. Kolara nodded grimly. Get it to Morales and tell him, tell him I'm ready to talk. But even as Kolara set her plan in motion, darker forces worked to undermine her efforts. In the shadows of the Imperial Court, Ambassador Yaksa of the Voxari smiled, his mandibles clicking with satisfaction. Everything was proceeding exactly as he had orchestrated. On Earth, the counterattack began. Stealth ships slipped past the Empire's defensive lines, unleashing waves of nanobots on vital agri-worlds. Fields withered, crops rotted on the vine, the Empire's food supply evaporated in a matter of days. Admiral Petrov coordinated the assault from his flagship, the ESS Nemesis. A holographic star map before him blazed with targets each going dark as Earth vengeance fell. Sir, his exo reported, we're receiving a priority transmission. It's, it's from within the Empire. Petrov's eyes widened as Senator Kolara's image materialized. Admiral, she began, I come seeking peace, but first we must save your people. Across the war-torn stars on a battered Imperial agri-world, Agent Marcus Reyes huddled in a storm drain. The once lush fields around him had turned to ash and dust. He keyed his emergency beacon, praying it would cut through the communications blackout. This is Reyes, he whispered. If anyone can hear this, we need extraction, now. Captain Okafor's voice crackled through his calm. Hold tight, Marcus, we're coming for you. As Alpha Team's ship screamed through the atmosphere, Okafor turned to her assembled strike force. This is a smash and grab, people. Get our agents out and leave nothing for the Empire to salvage. Meanwhile, Sergeant Tanaka led Bravo team through the twisted corridors of Raxon's command base. Alarms wailed as they fought their way deeper into the complex. There, Tanaka pointed to a heavily reinforced door. That's our target. Plant the charges and let's get out of here. But as they worked, a spine-chilling laugh echoed through the chamber. Ambassador Yaksa emerged from the shadows, his alien features twisted in a mockery of a smile. Well done, humans, he hissed. You've played your parts perfectly. Tanaka raised his weapon, but Yaksa was faster. A wave of psychic energy slammed into the team, sending them crashing to the floor. Now, Yaksa's voice dripped with malice, let me show you the true face of your enemy. As consciousness faded, Tanaka saw the air shimmer around Yaksa. The Voxari's form blurred, shifting into something far more terrifying, something ancient, something that had been pulling the strings all along. The galaxy teetered on the brink of annihilation, unaware of the greater threat lurking in the shadows. And in the crucible of war, humanity's grit would be tested as never before. The galaxy erupted into chaos. As news of Earth's devastating counterattack spread, the once mighty galactic empire fractured. Senator Kalara's moderate faction, seizing the moment, struck swiftly and decisively. In the opulent halls of the Imperial Palace, Kolara herself led the charge. Her scales gleamed in the flickering emergency lights as she and her loyal guards cornered the emperor in his private chambers. It's over, she declared, her voice steady. Surrender now and we can end this madness. The emperor, his usual regal bearing, shattered, slumped in defeat. Nearby, Ambassador Yaksa snarled and lashed out with a burst of psychic energy. But Cholera's guards were prepared, activating Isish dampening fields that left the Voxari powerless. As Kalara's forces secured the capital, Vraxen and his hardline supporters slipped away. Their destination, 
a secret fortress buried deep within an unnamed world on the Empire's fringes. On Earth, tension crackled through the emergency war room. Mark Morales stood at the center, surrounded by holograms displaying the rapidly shifting galactic landscape. Admiral Petrov's grizzled face appeared on the main screen. This is our chance, he urged. We strike now, we can crush what's left of Raxin's forces in one fell swoop. Agent Sato nodded in agreement. A decisive victory would cement Earth's new position. But Captain Okafor shook her head. And risk alienating potential allies within the Empire? We push too hard. We could unite them against us all over again. The debate raged, strategies and counter-arguments flying. Then a voice cut through the din. We may not have a choice. All eyes turned to Zarthon Cole, the Voxari defector. He stepped forward, activating a holographic display. I've uncovered intelligence on Vraxen's next move. He's not running scared. He's preparing a counter-strike. The image coalesced into schematics of horrifying bioweapons. Dr. Ishikawa, her face pale, studied the data. If these are accurate, she said, her voice barely above a whisper, Vraxen could render entire worlds uninhabitable, not just for the Empire, for humans as well. Silence fell over the room. Morales' expression hardened. We can't let that happen, he declared. Petrov, ready the fleet. Okafor, I want our best infiltration team prepped and ready to move. Within hours, Sergeant Tanaka and Bravo team were aboard a stealth transport, streaking towards Vraxen's hidden fortress. Their mission, neutralize the bioweapon threat at any cost. Simultaneously, Lieutenant Kozlov led Charlie team on a daring raid. Their target, a remote Imperial shipyard housing prototype warships. As they approached, Kozlov's voice crackled over the team's comms. Remember, people, we're not just stealing ships. We're evening the odds for the final push. Charlie team's assault was swift and brutal. They fought their way through security checkpoints, their path littered with the bodies of Raxon's loyalists. But as they neared the main hangar, Shadows detached from the walls. Shadow Blade assassins, Vraxen's elite killers. Steel clashed against energy blades. Kozlov ducked under a vicious swipe, his own combat knife finding a weak point in his attacker's armor. Nearby, Agent Novak's pistol barked repeatedly as he held off two assassins at once. Kozlov! Novak shouted. Get to the ships! I'll hold them! His words cut off in a pained grunt as a Shadow Blade's weapon slipped past his guard. Novak stumbled, blood blossoming across his chest. Kozlov snarled, redoubling his efforts. With a final, desperate push, Charlie Team broke through. They raced up the ramp of a sleek Imperial dreadnought, Kozlov half carrying the wounded Novak. As the stolen warship roared to life, Kozlov allowed himself a grim smile. They'd paid in blood, but they now had the firepower to challenge Vraxen on equal terms. Light years away, Bravo team infiltrated Vraxen's fortress. They moved like ghosts through twisting corridors, guided by Zarthon Cole's intel. At last, they reached a massive vault door. Behind it, the bioweapon stockpile. Tanaka worked quickly, fingers flying over the security panel. The door slid open with a hiss, revealing racks of canisters filled with sickly green liquid. All right, people, Tanaka said. Let's get these charges set and... Alarms blared. The team whirled to see Vraxen himself at the head of a squad of fanatically loyal guards. Vermin, the fleet lord spat. Did you really think you could steal into the heart of my power? Tanaka's mind raced. They were outgunned, outnumbered. There was only one way to ensure the bioweapons never saw use. New plan, he growled to his team. Overload the power core. We're taking this whole place down. As Bravo team fought a desperate holding action, Tanaka sprinted for the reactor controls. Vraxen's forces poured fire after him, but he reached his goal. With unbreakable spirit, he began the overload sequence. The fortress shuddered. Tanaka rejoined his team, and together they made a final stand. As the reactor went critical, Bravo team's sacrifice ensured the bioweapons would never threaten another world. The loss of Bravo Team hit Earth's forces hard, but it galvanized their perseverance. With the bioweapon threat neutralized, Admiral Petrov's armada closed in on Vraxen's last stronghold. 
Morales' face filled vid screens across the sector as he issued his ultimatum. Surrender now or face total annihilation. Vraxen's response was a stream of vitriolic curses. Petrov gave the order, and Earth fleet opened fire. The barrage reduced Vraxen's bastion to molten slag, along with the fleet lord himself. In the wake of the victory, Senator Kolara moved swiftly to establish a new galactic order. Humanity would take its place as equals among the stars, just as Morales had demanded from the start. But even as the new alliance took shape, Reports trickled in of Imperial splinter groups refusing to lay down arms. Some whispered of a quest for lost Zarekan technology, ancient terraforming power to rival Earth's own. The war might be over, but the struggle to forge a lasting peace had only just begun. The dust of war had barely settled when Mark Morales turned his attention to securing Earth's newfound position. He summoned Admiral Petrov to his office, the holographic star map between them alive with potential. We need to lock down those trade routes, Morales said, his finger tracing a path through former Imperial space. Show the galaxy that humanity's here to stay. Petrov nodded, his weathered face set with perseverance. I'll assemble a multinational fleet. We'll make it clear. These lanes are open for business, but not to troublemakers. Within days, Petrov's armada cut through the stars. They encountered sporadic resistance, pockets of Imperial loyalists unwilling to accept the new order. But Earth's ships, battle-hardened and superior, made short work of the opposition. On Zarthax Prime, Captain Lena Okafor surveyed the scarred landscape. Earth's terraforming strikes had left their mark, but life was already clawing its way back. She turned to the Voxari defector, Zarthon Cole, his alien features unreadable. We need to prioritize food production, Okafor said. Can your people adapt their agri-tech to these conditions? Call's mandibles clicked thoughtfully. It will be challenging, but not impossible. We'll need to... An explosion rocked the ground, cutting him off. Okafor's calm crackled to life. Captain, dissidents are attacking the main hydroponics facility. Okafor's team moved with practiced efficiency, cornering the saboteurs before they could do lasting damage. As she zip-tied the last attacker, a nagging thought wormed its way into her mind. These weren't desperate civilians. Their gear was too advanced, their tactics too refined. Back on Earth, Agent Damien Sato poured over intelligence reports. Scattered fragments painted a disturbing picture. Whispers of the Zarekin, a shadowy force with world-shaping powers that put even Earth's terraforming to shame. Sato's investigation led him deep into uncharted space. The Kalian Nebula swirled around his stealth ship, Tendrils of cosmic gas obscuring sensors. There, a flicker of energy. He maneuvered closer, revealing a sprawling research facility hidden within the nebula's heart. Sato infiltrated with practiced ease, but something was off. The corridors were too quiet, the security too lax. It wasn't until he reached the central chamber that he realized his mistake. Welcome, Agent Sato. The voice was cold, imperious. A figure emerged from the shadows, tall, willowy, with eyes that seemed to hold the depths of space. I am Overseer Anara. I must admit, I'm almost impressed you made it this far. Sato reached for his weapon, but his limbs wouldn't respond. He could only watch as Anara circled him, her alien features twisting into a smile that held no warmth. Your people's fumbling attempts at reshaping worlds are quaint, she said but you have no concept of true power. Allow me to give you a taste. Sato's world exploded into unimaginable sensations as Anara's consciousness invaded his own. His last coherent thought was a desperate hope that his emergency beacon had activated. Meanwhile, in a secure lab on Earth, Dr. Reina Ishikawa glared at the hulking form of Sergeant Kai Tanaka. The sole survivor of Bravo Team loomed over her workstation, his scarred face set in a scowl. Your swarms are too slow, Tanaka growled. In combat, every second counts. Ishikawa's eyes flashed. And if we rush the process, we risk losing control entirely. These nanobots could reduce a planet to gray goo if we're not careful. Their argument was interrupted by a priority alert. Agent Axel Novak's face appeared on the main screen, his expression grim. We've got a problem, Novak said. 
I've uncovered an Imperial Splinter Group experimenting with Zarekan Biotech. The things I saw, it's worse than we imagine. As Novak's report unfolded, the tension in the room ratcheted up. Tanaka's fist clenched, while Ishikawa's mind raced with the implications. The unfinished Imperial Civil War had opened a Pandora's box of terrifying possibilities. In his office, Mark Morales felt the weight of leadership press down on him. Reports flooded in from all corners. Petrov's successes, Okafor's struggles, Sato's disturbing silence, and now Novak's chilling discovery. The fragile peace they'd fought so hard to achieve seemed to be slipping through his fingers. Voices from Earth clamored for action. Some called for diplomacy, others for a show of overwhelming force. Morales stood at the center of the storm, knowing that his next decision could shape the fate of humanity for generations to come. As he prepared to address the nation, a priority message flashed across his screen. Its contents made his blood run cold. The Zarekin were on the move, and Earth's terraforming supremacy was about to be put to the ultimate test. Test. The Zarekin were on the move, and Earth's terraforming supremacy was about to be put to the ultimate test. Morales's eyebrows furrowed as he absorbed the implications. He keyed his calm. Captain Okafor, report to my office immediately. Within minutes, Lena Okafor stood before him, her posture rigid. Morales studied her for a moment, then nodded decisively. Congratulations, Admiral Okafor. You're being promoted effective immediately. Surprise flickered across Okafor's face, quickly replaced by steely perseverance. Thank you, sir. What are my orders? Morales activated a holographic display, revealing a map of contested space. I'm tasking you with leading a new elite strike force. Your mission, neutralize renegade imperial threats and secure our position. Okafor's mind raced, assessing potential candidates. I want Lieutenant Kozlov for ground ops and Sergeant Williams. He's unconventional, but effective. Approved, Morales said. Your first target is here. He highlighted a system in the Altair cluster. Fleet Lord Ixara's loyalists are developing bioweapons using Zarekin tech. Shut them down. Okafor saluted crisply. We won't fail you, sir. Days later, Okafor's strike team approached Ixara's hidden cloning facility. The installation was buried deep within an asteroid, shielded from prying eyes. Inside, Agent Marcus Reyes had already infiltrated, feeding vital intelligence to the assault team. Kozlov led the ground insertion, his team moving with practiced efficiency through twisting corridors. The stench of chemical preservatives filled the air, mixed with an underlying wrongness that set their teeth on edge. A scream echoed from a nearby chamber. Kozlov signaled, and Sergeant Williams breached the door. The sight within made even the hardened soldier recoil. Vats lined the walls, filled with writhing, half-formed monstrosities. Twisted amalgams of flesh and metal pulsed with unholy life. An imperial scientist looked up from his work, eyes wide with terror. Williams didn't hesitate. His rifle barked and the scientist crumpled. Looks like we found their bioweapon lab, LT. Kozlov nodded grimly. Plant the charges. We're leveling this place. As the team worked, alarms blared. Ixara's security forces swarmed towards them, a tide of fanatical defenders. Kozlov's squad held the line, their weapons cutting down wave after wave of attackers. But in the chaos, something escaped from the labs. A horrific creature, more weapon than organism, lumbered into view. Its elongated limbs ended in vicious claws, and its maw dripped with corrosive saliva. Kozlov opened fire, but his rounds seemed to have little effect. The monstrosity lunged, its claws raking across his chest. He stumbled back, feeling an unnatural burning spread from the wound. Kozlov's hit, Williams shouted, laying down suppressing fire. We need evac, now! Admiral Okafor's voice crackled over the comm. Incoming, hold position for 60 seconds. Those 60 seconds stretched into an eternity. Kozlov felt his body burning from within, changing. As the rescue shuttle touched down, he slipped into unconsciousness. In orbit, Okafor watched grimly as the cloning facility erupted in nuclear fire. Her strike team had succeeded, but at a terrible cost. Lieutenant Kozlov lay in quarantine, 
his body ravaged by an experimental mutagenic pathogen. As medical teams fought to save Kozlov, Okafor received a priority transmission. Agent Damien Sato's face appeared, haggard and haunted. Admiral, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, I've escaped the Zarikin arcology. The things I've seen. Overseer Anara is breeding an army of super soldiers. They're combining their bioengineering with Earth's terraforming tech. Okafor's blood ran cold. What's their endgame, Sato? Total galactic domination, Sato replied. Anara plans to reduce our worlds to primordial chaos. We need to warn Morales. The Zarikin are coming, and they're bringing hell with them. Before Okafor could respond, alarms blared throughout her ship. She whirled to face the tactical display, her heart sinking at what she saw. Lieutenant Kozlov had broken free of quarantine. The mutagenic infection had transformed him into a rampaging monster, tearing through decks with inhuman strength. Okafor watched in horror as the thing that was once Kozlov slaughtered his way through defensive checkpoints. All hands, this is Admiral Okafor, she announced, her voice steady despite the chaos. Evacuate to escape pods immediately. Prepare for emergency purge protocols. As her crew scrambled to safety, Okafor opened a channel to Admiral Petrov's flagship. Sir, we have a code black situation. Request immediate cauterization of my vessel. Petrov's reply was grim. Understood, Admiral. May God have mercy on their souls. Okafor's eyes hardened as she watched Petrov's ships move into position. She allowed herself one moment of grief for Kozlov, and the others lost. Then, as energy lances from Petrov's fleet began to slice through her ship, she steeled herself for the battles to come. The Zarekin threat loomed on the horizon, and Earth's forces would need every ounce of strength and ingenuity to survive the coming storm. Mark Morales stood before the United Earth Council, his face a mask of grim willpower. The Zarakin threat cannot be contained through conventional means, he said, his voice echoing through the chamber. I am hereby authorizing the World Fire Protocol. The chamber erupted into chaos. Dr. Reina Ishikawa leapt to her feet, her eyes blazing with fury. You can't be serious, she shouted over the din. A saturation, terraforming strike? It's unconscionable. Morales weathered the storm of protests, his decision unwavering. As he left the chamber, Admiral Petrov fell into step beside him. You made the right call, sir, Petrov said. We can't afford to pull our punches, not with what's at stake. But the backlash was swift and fierce. Within hours, crowds had gathered outside government buildings across Earth, their angry chants filling the air. No world fire! No genocide! They shouted, waving signs denouncing Morales as a war criminal. As Earth descended into civil unrest, the Zarikin wasted no time. On a dozen worlds, the skies turned in sickly green as Anara's bioforming agents rained down. Lush forests withered and twisted, replaced by pulsing, alien growth. In the festering swamps and cancerous jungles, nightmarish creatures stirred to life. Admiral Okafor's elite strike force, now under the command of Major Yin, raced to contain the spreading infection. Their ships burned through the skies raining fire on Zarekin strongholds. But each victory came at a terrible cost. On New Eden, Yin's Marines battled through a hive of bioengineered horrors. Sergeant Williams screamed as a creature with too many mouths latched onto his arm, its caustic saliva eating through his armor. His squad mate, Private Chen, blasted the monster away, but the damage was done. Williams would never hold a rifle again. Back on Earth, Morales received a priority alert. His face paled as he read the report. They've done it, he muttered. Anara's perfected her super soldiers. The Zarikin champion, Kaldor, led the assault on humanity's outer colonies. On Harmony, the planet's meager defenses crumbled before him. Kaldor moved with inhuman grace, his biomantically enhanced body shrugging off weapons fire as he tore through fortifications. Major Yin's forces arrived too late to save Harmony but they refused to let it fall without a fight. Yin himself faced Kaldor in single combat, his power armor barely withstanding the Zarikin's devastating blows. In the end, Yin was forced to retreat, leaving harmony to Kaldor's tender mercies. As the Zarikin subjugated system after system, 
Agent Sato worked feverishly on a daring plan. He pored over star charts, his eyes bloodshot from lack of sleep. Finally, he keyed his calm. Admiral Okafor, I have a plan, but it's risky as hell. Sato's scheme involved luring Kaldor's forces into an uninhabited system rigged with dormant terraforming nanobots. It was a long shot, but with Anara gathering resources for a final apocalyptic strike against Earth, they were out of options. On Earth, Morales faced the most difficult decision of his life. The protests had escalated into full-blown riots. Dr. Ishikawa's pacifist faction had barricaded themselves inside the terraforming research center, threatening to destroy vital data if the Worldfire Protocol wasn't scrapped. But the reports from the front lines left no room for doubt. Morales took a deep breath and gave the order. Execute the Worldfire Protocol. May God forgive us. As Sato's trap was sprung and Okafor's fleet engaged Anara's forces above the Arcology, the galaxy held its breath. The fate of humanity hung in the balance, with Earth itself divided on the price of victory. The World Fire Protocol ignited, and humanity's fate was sealed in fire. Sato's gambit unfolded above a nameless world. Kaldor's forces swarmed into the system, falling for the trap. Dormant nanobots awakened transforming the planet into a hellscape that consumed Zarikin and human alike. Okafor's fleet engaged Anara's armada in a desperate bid to end the war. But victory came at a terrible price. Dozens of systems lay in ruins, reduced to lifeless husks by the apocalyptic clash. The skies of a hundred worlds burned with the funeral pyres of civilizations. In the wake of destruction, millions of alien refugees fled, seeking sanctuary among the stars. On Earth, the celebrations were hollow, drowned out by the cries of the morning. Agent Sato stumbled from his final psychic battle with Anara, his brilliant mind shattered beyond repair. He gazed at his handlers with vacant eyes, unable to comprehend the pyrrhic triumph he had helped achieve. Admiral Okafor stood on the bridge of her crippled flagship, watching the remnants of her once-proud fleet limp away from the devastation. Half her ships and crews were gone, sacrificed in the audacious attempt at the arcology. She clenched her fist, nails biting into her palm as she surveyed the carnage. Status report, she demanded, her voice hoarse. Her exo's face was grim. We've captured Anara alive, Admiral. But the cost... Okafor nodded. The cost was etched in the haunted eyes of her surviving crew, in the silence where comrades should have been. On Earth, the divisions that had simmered beneath the surface erupted into open conflict. Dr. Ishikawa led her pacifist faction in condemning the Morales regime. We will not be party to this genocide, she shouted, her voice carrying over the din of protests. We choose a different path. Ishikawa and her followers seized a colony ship, fleeing Earth to establish a renegade settlement devoted to aiding the alien refugees affected by the world fire devastation. As their ship vanished into the void, Admiral Petrov's hardliners moved swiftly to crush any remaining dissent. The time for half-measures is over, Petrov declared, his eyes cold as he addressed the remnants of Earth's leadership. We must secure our future, no matter the consequences. But even as Earth's regime tightened its grip, new threats emerged from the ashes of the old order. Fleet Lord Ixara, once thought defeated, rose again on the fringes of known space. His message spread like wildfire among those disillusioned with Morales' rule. The Empire's founding principles have been betrayed. Ixara's holographic image flickered above a dozen worlds. We must reclaim our destiny. Morales watched the reports flood in, his face a mask of grim drive. The victories they had fought so hard to achieve were slipping away. He keyed his calm, connecting to Petrov's flagship. Admiral. Initiate Operation Earthrise, Morales ordered. It's time to end this, once and for all. Petrov's fleet moved with brutal efficiency. Experimental mutagenic weapons, derived from captured Zarekan biotechnology, rained down on Ixara's fortified shipyards. Entire cities vanished in blinding flashes, leaving only smoldering craters and twisted metal behind. On the ground, Major Samara Yin led her strike team through the ruins of what had once been a thriving alien metropolis. The stench of burning flesh and melted plasteel filled the air. 
Suddenly, a familiar figure emerged from the smoke. Kaldor, reborn as a nightmarish fusion of Zarik and flesh in Imperial cybernetics. Did you think it would be that easy to destroy me? Kaldor's voice was a metallic rasp. I am beyond death now. Wynne raised her pulse rifle, her team fanning out behind her. Then I guess we'll have to try harder this time. As the two forces clashed, neither side realizing the true stakes of their conflict, the galaxy trembled on the precipice of a new and terrible age. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.